Welcome to the Empower Network TV. So excited to be bringing you these five fabulous individuals. And we're talking about letting go. This is the Letting Go Micro Summit. Let's first, I just want to welcome everyone. So first of all, Haley Joy, welcome here. Coming all the way, all the way uh, to us from South Africa. Bronson down in Costa Rica, is that correct? Okay. That's right. Welcome here, sir. Now, Arletta, are you down in Texas? I am. Down in Texas. Okay. Good old state of Texas. Good old state of Texas. <laughs> and Suzanne, you're also in Texas. Yes. Oh, snap. Let's do a coffee, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then Shante, are you in te- are you not in tech? Where are you at? Dr. Destiny is in California. Oh, Dr. Destiny's in California. Okay. Shante, <laughs> Dr. Shante Destiny's in California. Okay. So we have a nice collection here of different geographies. So let's go around. Everyone take a minute. Please introduce those of those of you who have not seen in the Empower Network these five, their interviews, all of their interviews were stellar. Please go back and, and watch their interviews. But let's start with Haley Joy. Can you give us a minute on who you are, what you do? And I'm just going to go and mute the channel here as you're talking. Thanks, Amos. Hey, everybody. I'm Haley Joy Weinberg. I'm coming to you from Johannesburg in South Africa. It is currently 5 p.m. (laughs) So I'm winding down while you're all winding up. Um, I am a size inclusive fashion designer specializing in plus sizes. And I have basically niched my business right down to dressing the forgotten woman. That's how I, I liken them because In 2023, we are still having this conversation about the fact that there still isn't respect for plus size fashion for women. So that is my passion. I also am a late bloomer fabric designer. I take nature photos and do weird and wonderful things in my iPhone and create fabric prints and canvases and all fancy things. And yeah, I really love what I do. And I am so excited to have joined this network because like you guys are global I'm in this little down south (laughs) at the bottom of Africa so it's really exciting for me to be here and thank you Amos you are a very special human oh I'll keep saying it thank you Haley. thank you for being here I love seeing your pictures you post on Facebook just saying if you're looking for inspirational photography jump on her Facebook. Thanks for being here. Bronson from Costa Rica. Let's uh, hear from you, sir. Oh, I'm just gonna, you gotta unmute you here. Asking to unmute. There we go. All right. Well, you said keep it short. So I'll give you the top three hits. So, you know, I've kind of figured out how to work for myself and how to make it work. And that's taken 28 years. So that was a huge success. And I'm an SEO consultant to the gaming and gambling industry primarily with my own software product that I white label and use for my clients, both internally and across the world. And this allows me to free up enough time to investigate a whole bunch of other rabbit holes, which is actually my main passion is falling into rabbit holes. And at the moment, we're busy investigating blockchain technology with cryptos and NFTs and stuff like that, which is really, really exciting. And that's the kind of stuff that keeps me up until 3.45 a.m., you know what I mean? Watching auctions and seeing if my stuff sold or not, et cetera. Wow. And yeah, well, I'm, well, and I'm at the Empower Network for two main reasons. One is to educate. Uh, it's a nice central point for me to get access to a whole lot of coaches and a whole lot of modalities and things like that that kind of allow me to go down whatever avenue I'm interested in or studying up on or learning about at that particular time. And then on the flip side of that, you guys have got influence and stuff going on and and classrooms and things like that, where, you know, me as somebody who may want to teach as a on-ramp to one of my SEO software products or a package that I create at a later stage, you know, having access to classrooms that I can actually teach in is awesome because I learned last night that even though I take a lot for granted, apparently a lot of people don't know what I do. So you know, there's a huge opportunity for me to share the SEO stuff, the crypto stuff, the NFT stuff. So the Empower Network provides a great place for me to do that and a great place to kind of 
absorb knowledge from all of these cool people that we get to hang out with every day. Sorry, I'm muted. Bronson, we thank you. We love that you're here too. And uh, maybe we'll see your cat sometime during the interview. Let's go to Suzanne. Suzanne, coming to us from Northern Texas, if I heard right, Northern Texas. Oh, you're muted. Just unmute yourself. Yeah, it's uh, East Texas. It's okay. uh, probably about an hour and a half east of Dallas. And so, um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just I'm so grateful to be a part of this group. And and I've been listening to all of y'all. And it's it's just already just been so great. And so, yeah, I'm here with the Empower Network because um, I want to learn and I want to help educate too. Um, I am also in the digital space like Bronson. And I basically help businesses build software that builds their dreams. And so sometimes people, they have this vision, this dream, and they're so excited. And then they start messing with the tech side and, and they get so overwhelmed by it. And they start losing, yeah, right, Bronson? Yeah. <laughs> and they start losing their dream because they're just getting like, you know, it's the weight of, oh, I got to learn this. And now I have to learn this. And oh, now this is new and I have to keep up. And it's like, no, 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 don't, don't give up your dream. You know, let's help you, let's help you keep getting there. And so we kind of teach people how to let the software do the heavy lifting so that they can continuously pursue their dream. And I hope to, to be able to share that with anyone who wants to, wants to know and needs help with that. But I also want to learn. I mean, just the little bit of time I've been here, I just, I get so high whenever I get on these like calls and listen to y'all on the interview. I know I'm like, well, let's go run, you know, like it's very empowering. So thanks for letting me be here. Well, thanks Suzanne for being here. We just love your energy. Okay, Dr. Destiny coming to us from California. Hey, it's me, Dr. Destiny. I am your spiritual midwife. I am your destiny strategist. What I talk about is how to understand your purpose. Why on earth am I here? Sometimes we go about finding that by actually listening to what people say. You know, sometimes it's hard just to hear a compliment when someone says, hey, you're good at that thing that you do. Take the time and listen. That might very well be your destiny. So one of the things I focus on is how to bring that to life. How do we nurture it? Think of it like a baby. It takes about nine months to get that nutrients, to go through different phases and different stages. And I'm your hand holder leading you to your path to destiny. That's what I enjoy doing, Amos. Wow. Okay, boom. Someone's polished it, practiced it speaking. Because that looks like... <laughs> This much in like this much. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks for being here. We love that you're here. All right. Arletta coming to us from Arletta, which part of Texas are you in? Are you in the Midwest or your middle? Or are you? Oh, I'm not too far from Suzanne. I'm actually 20 minutes outside of Dallas. Awesome. So <laughs> I'm in the northern part of Dallas as well. So we are excited to be here today. I'm so excited. As many of you know, I am like an empowerment queen. So I absolutely love inspiring people, encouraging people, uplifting people. This platform is perfect for me to just show up and show out. I want to inspire the world, not just some pieces of the world, the whole thing. I just want to, you know, I want people to feel loved. I want people to feel accepted, seen, and heard. And so on top of that, I'm also a trauma recovery expert and healing strategist, as well as a speaking coach. And so I help others to amplify their authentic voice, okay? So not to duplicate other voices that are in the market, but finding your particular voice and being true to it. So that's my plug on me, but I want to get back over to Haley Joy. Um, you need a model, you need me, okay? I'm plus size and I'm thinking about these prints. And um, yeah, we need to connect. <laughs> you guys are going to connect. That was I was watching your eyes, Arletta, as Haley was talking. Oh. We're going to Haley next. So Haley, let's thank you so much, Arletta, for we love that you're here. Haley, let's go to you. So this is about letting go. Let's talk about when, when you think letting go and your life and what you've had to let go of in order to achieve what you achieved. What are some overarching themes you've seen that have helped you unlock and cut those strings so you could so you could fly. What does letting go look like to you? And you'll have to unmute yourself here. It was such a great question. When you posed it, I was like, oh yeah, this is for me. Big time, this is so for me. So my letting go, I have 
have two. So I have a personal one and I have a business one. But they've kind of come together now. So I always said that when I turned 50, I gained insight into what I really wanted to be. I literally spent 30 odd years trying to, trying to fit in, trying to be what society wanted me to be. I chose to be a plus size fashion designer when plus size was not a happening thing. Um, so that in itself already kind of set me apart. One of the things that I found really difficult was that mainstream media were not interested in speaking to me. They, and it took a brave journalist to actually phone me up and say, I'm going to tell you the truth because my heart breaks because you should have a voice and everybody should be talking about what you're doing, not about me, but about what I was doing. And she said to me, but it's never going to happen because the media cannot be seen to be aligning themselves with somebody who's saying it's okay to be fat because she says that's how the media perceives it. Because you're coming out and you love what you do and you're so positive and you talk it and you feel it and you live it. But basically what it's doing is it's saying, well, don't worry, we're not going to tell you how to lose weight. We're going to make clothes to fit your body. And she said, it's never going to happen. And it was, I was so heartbroken for about one minute. And then I got really angry, really angry. And I was like, right, you guys don't know who I am. Like, I am not going to take no for an answer. So I basically went out and became my own media outlet. Not 100% out in the open. I niched it down. So I had built these, um, these WhatsApp lists of women. And I started going out on private videos to them. And it was just, it was just the most phenomenal thing that, that could have happened. And suddenly there was this connection and they were feeling loved and they were in a safe space and nobody was judging and there was no nastiness and there was no social media bullying and there was none of that. It was just them and me. And I just let go. I was actually so grateful because it took me on a completely different path in terms of my marketing. So my marketing today is very personalized. I do a lot of personal one-on-one -on -one videos. So a client will message me and say, hi, Haley, I'm flying in from New York um, and I need a new wardrobe. Can you send me some examples? And then, you know, then it, it'll be faster when I come in. And I literally, nothing fancy. That's something else I've learned. There's no setup. I'm in my stock room. No great lighting. I've got fluorescent lighting. I've got crappy ceilings. I, and I hold the clothes or one of my um, assistants holds the clothes up and I talk them through it. So it would be, hey, Oleda, I've just got this black and white fabric and I know you're going to love it. So we're doing this and we're doing this. And, and I personalize the videos. I can't tell you what that's done for the business because as plus size woman, nobody ever cares. Nobody ever respects or acknowledges and suddenly here's this person going I don't care about your size and your shape I just I just want to make you feel and look beautiful and I want to honor you as a woman I don't care what you look like so I go up to a 7xl and my top end of the business that I do is five six and seven because those are the women that nobody's making clothes for so I just let go of the, of the norm. Mm. And I gave up trying to be in a newspaper and a magazine and all of that kind of thing. And I just built my own so-called media outlet. And it's been the most phenomenal journey. And I now teach that. I do mentoring and I teach it. And that's something when you and I spoke about me coming into the Empower Network, it is something that I want to share because there are many people like me who are not of the norm. But Society doesn't really allow that, even in 2023. Yet when somebody comes out and says, listen, I did it and it worked for me, it opens a door to a whole new way of thinking. It unleashes in people something that they have that they don't even know they have. So it's been huge for me. And I, I reflect a lot on letting go. It's they two big words in my life. Thank you, Haley. Joy, thanks for sharing all that. All right, uh, that was beautiful. Bronson, let's go to you. What is 
what is letting go look like for you in your life, sir? Because, and you're, you gonna unmute yourself again, because the journey you've had, where you've been, where you were raised, I know a bit of your story. Make sure you listen to Bronson's interview if you, uh, after you hear what he's probably about to say here. So, you know, like, I think growing up, I had a, like the normal family life, you know, I was the last kid, everything's happy, like sweet. And I was lucky that like the programming and everything that got done was okay until I was seven. And then that's when the wheels came off for my parents and everybody else and everything went to shit. And, you know, people get divorced, kids gain weight. Like Haley was talking about how you kind of, you know, you kind of end up getting ostracized a little bit and stuff like that. And you're almost forced to find your own way because there's everyone's trying to tell you what you should be doing and it's in conflict with what you feel you should be doing and what what stuck out for me with Haley is that you have to follow your intuition you have to blaze new trails and like you know to get to a place of real freedom and sovereignty you've got to get through so many preconceived ideas and so much junk that it's actually like it's really an, it's an uphill battle and, you know, what Haley's able to do through overcoming all of that and through her way of letting go is that she's able to lead by example and be a life for others to follow. And I think, you know, for me, that's a similar thing. And Haley mentioned she splits it up into personal and business. And for me, like, you know, I started losing brothers and dads and stuff like that. So by the time I was 21, that stuff happened, you know, and then I woke up like, somewhere around 21 and said this is not it working in bars working in restaurants like this is not my life you know and um, making a change and deciding that I was going to stick with my intuition since I was seven I've been into computers and stuff like that so I went back onto that route and you know just kept on going and going and figuring it out and evolving as things went on because you know graphic design became web design became marketing became seo became business became personal development and every time you take a step up you've got to let go of whatever's coming and whatever's just been because you've got new skills which give you a new perspective which open up new possibilities so what you've accomplished means nothing. It happened yesterday. What you're doing right now is going to set you up for tomorrow, but tomorrow hasn't happened and you don't know what's going to take place. So just focus on doing what you can right now. Have a big enough goal that like, no matter what bullshit you're stepping through, if you look up, you know, there's something there that you're going to aim at that's never going to move. And that's where I came up with the whole thing about how can you do that so that you could live in the moment and no matter whether you, you're getting beaten in the street or whether you're getting fed like five-star stuff in a hotel, nothing changes. And the only way you can do that is by controlling your perspective of things. And if you can control your perspective of things, you have control over everything. So that's what I've been doing. And, you know, from a business perspective, it's, sort of, it's set me up really well because by evolving and letting go of what you did before, having a look at it, rolling it up, optimizing it. It allows you to grow and move the stuff that made you a better person with you. And all of the luggage that didn't really contribute or serve you well, doesn't make it through the door into the next phase of your evolution. And that way you are kind of, you just like, I'm going to make this up right now and I hope it sticks, but it's like you're distilling greatness, the greatness that you have within you. You've got to chip away at all of that bullshit and stuff on the outside until you can get to the core of what's in the middle. And once you find that, that actually allows you to, to frame and filter and focus on the things that matter. And once that comes into focus, everything else just fades into the background. And I found that once you can adjust that filter, the amount of peace and perspective and stuff that you get is incredible. You know, and it's really just come together for me in the last six to 12 months where I feel like the better my perspective gets, the better I'm able to identify the opportunities that are coming and then work with the universe to co-create my reality. So that's the way that I see it. So my whole thing is just about, you know, it's radical personal responsibility. I don't give a shit what you're doing. I don't expect you to care what I'm doing. I don't expect you to judge me for what I'm doing because I'm not going to judge you. So just let me be. And, you know, if I can take responsibility for myself and what I do and what I think and how I behave, the world will be a better place. And the more people can do the same thing, the better place is going to get better and bigger. So, you know, 
it's just for me, that's where I am right now. And, and in business, that's it. Like I'm able to roll it up to the point where I can follow my bliss and stay in a creative flow. And if you create from a point and you engage from a point of creative energy, I find that like, wow, man, that is like serious juice. And that's where I'm going to try and stay. Thanks, Bronson. Really appreciate what you shared there. That was awesome. Uh, Suzanne, let's go to you. What does, what has letting go look like for you, girl? Well, I, I just, uh, man, Haley and Bronson are heavy to follow up with um, or follow behind there, especially I love the co-creating. Um, something that they said, though, it, it's like this common theme of like, you know, you you're trying to be yourself and the world is saying, don't be yourself. Or you're seeing all these messages that are like, don't be yourself. And you're getting kind of like smacked in the face every time you are yourself. But on the inside, you feel it's so real and so raw and you know that's the way you're supposed to be going. And it's like, it kind of takes us a while and we almost have to hit like this level of suffering or some like something's just, it's gotta be so bad that you're like, F this, I don't wanna do this anymore. I'm tired of going on this way. What, what else is out here? And then it's like, okay, well, I know what that looks like. And, and I, I know you kind of come back to what you know and, and you're like, okay, I know me. And it's like, you know, I heard Haley saying this and, you know, and. And I heard Bronson just say it. It's like when when they went into their flow, their true frequency level, and they like and they and they were like owning it and honoring it, like their business took off even more. It's like you can't stop them, you know. And it's so it's like if you get in your frequency and and oh, I guess you said letting go. I should probably stick a little more with the focus there, but it's kind of <laughs> like you you have to you do you have to let go, and that is so flipping scary because the whole time you know I'm just gonna say I get scared, like even. You know, even like being here right now, I'm like, well, what if I say this and somebody hears it like that? But but you can't you can't do that. You you have to. And Amos is really good about helping all of us to do this. Like he's giving us a platform to just like be that person and and let go. And and then the bounty and abundance that comes when you do that is like inevitable. You couldn't run from it if you wanted to. And, you know, it's it's like it will just follow you. <laughs> and so. Um, so letting go is, is, is very, it can be very scary, but so good. It feels so good. And when you do it, it, it just, it, you, you're in your flow and then you're like riding the wave and, and, every, and it radiates from you and goes into every facet of your life. And, um, that's what letting go is to me. Thank you so much for sharing Suzanne. And I love how you just capped off everything they said. You're you're very good at being very inclusive and thinking of others. You're very strong in that. <clears throat> okay, Dr. Destiny. Dr. Destiny, what is letting go? You have quite, I, I got to remind people, if you're enjoying what someone says, please go and back and watch their interview. And all you have to do to find the interview is if you're on the app or on the thing, there's a search bar in the group and just type in, Dr. Destiny or Shante Destiny or type in Bronson or Suzanne or Haley Joy or Arletta and you'll see their interview come up. So Dr. Destiny, what does it look like for you? All right. So thank you for having me here. Letting go means to me so many things. It's letting go of old mindsets, possibly relationships that no longer serve me, ideologies that I held high at a certain age as I grow and move to another level, they don't matter as much. So as I was, go I was going about my week, I wanted to come real. I didn't wanna come coach or scripted. And I was like, I really have to know what this means to me. <laughs> so I was looking at everything that I was doing through the day, how I interacted with my daughter, how I interacted with my family. And it was like a real opportunity to observe. So one of, the thing, one of the things we have to know about letting go is take the time to breathe, to feel, to see, to taste what life is for you. So for me, letting go is life evolving through God's orchestration. Life evolving through God's orchestration. That's what it means to me. Because every time I grow and I evolve through life and I think I'm going to tell God what's going on, he's like, no, I'm going to do it like this. 
And he's definitely the key and the center of what I do. In this season of my life, I have been through, I think I shared with you that I've done 20 years of United States Naval Service. And so the usual trajectory is right after that, you go into a federal government job or a county job or a city job. Do you know I'm still having to let go of that ideal and that expectation on me, getting a constant check? And I'm like, am I supposed to trade in my destiny for this mindset? Am I supposed to trade in my destiny for money? Am I supposed to trade in my time for cash? And I can't do it. I don't care if I'm my last dime. I don't care what it is. I thank God that the core of me won't allow me to do it. So I knew I was able to resonate with what Bronson said. Like that centerpiece is the thing that's keeping me on an even keel. My, the center of who I am, a uh, destiny giver or purpose giver and someone that guides others, I have to live it myself. So when you really are in that creative flow, you have to be prepared to let go. And that's what I feel like this whole entire season of my life has been, which is, life evolving through God's orchestration. I'm just in the seat, allowing God to guide and direct me and learning how to be that authentic, genuine person that I need to be. It's giving me peace. Every time I take the time to let go, I'm going up another level, then I master that area, I can go on to the next thing. I don't feel stagnated, but if I wasn't to let go and if I was to hold on, I wouldn't be able to go to the next level. It's kind of like when you're driving and you have luggage. And I remember in the military, when we had to go on flights, we actually had to be weighed. And even the things we were taking with us had to be weighed. If we were too heavy and we had too much baggage, we could not get on the plane. And that's how I feel like letting go is. We're not going to be able to take off if we can't let go. Wow. That is a great metaphor. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. That was awesome. Let's go to Arletta. What does it mean to you, Arletta? Letting go. Wow. Well, first of all, this has been incredible so far. Um, letting go for me has been the acceptance of the fact that I need to control the way I see me and not and be less concerned for how others see me. It's the removal of limitations. It's also because I helped to walk so many others through traumatic experiences. It's like peeling back finger by finger and each one's process being totally different. One thing that I discovered when I was growing up as a younger girl is that I suffered a lot from normative conformity. And what normative conformity is, is when you surround yourself um, with people who don't see you just as you, you begin to conform to their idea of who you are based upon your sense of wanting to belong. And therefore you take on the attributes of what they say you should be versus who you are. And the reason why that was the way that it was is because I grew up in a place that had like 90% of the people were white people around me, but well, actually more than 90%, 98%. So the population of people of color was about 2%. And so therefore I was looked at as if though something was wrong with me because I didn't fit in. And so after people tell you for so many times that you don't fit in, you start to absorb that and you start to carry excess baggage with you. And then you start to make decisions based off others' formalities of how they see you versus what do you see when you see you. I learned that life is not a tug of war. If you're going to let go of something, you can't hold on to what's back there. You can't hold on to the past and, and reach for your future at the same time. So therefore you have to be able to diminish your thoughts of tug of war. Either you're gonna go forward or you're gonna fall back. There's only two, two ideas and two um, options, but the choice belongs to you. And so letting go for me has been through a lot of different complex situations. There's been divorces. There's been the growth of my children. It's been the, I'm an empty nester. It's been the, oh my goodness, what happens in career changes? Entrepreneurial ventures failing and, and some things being absolutely an exciting ride. Some things making me nervous and scared. 
but the willingness to explore. That's what letting go is. Accepting the fact that you have the power and the ability to explore seamless and limitless possibility. And so let go of tug, tug of war, release what's behind you because the truth is, is that it happened back there and there's absolutely nothing you can do and go back there and change or formulate. You cannot reorchestrate what's already happened. So the best way for you to elevate is to release yourself from excess baggage that's been holding you down so that you can soar. No person can take flight without being prepared to let go of weights that easily beset you because they'll just cause a detour. So letting go for me is just recognizing it's not tug of war, being very self-aware and acknowledging those things that have caused me setbacks and my willingness to let them go. Well, thank you so much, Arletta. That was beautiful. Found. Haley, I wanted to ask you, if you could be sitting beside, if you had little seven-year-old Haley Joy beside you right now, what is something that you've learned as an adult that, um, what is a key you've learned now that little seven-year-old Haley Joy didn't know, but that you know now something that maybe you could impart to other people that would help them if they haven't resolved all those things for themselves, like I haven't resolved it all for me. So I'm curious and I'll just ask you to unmute yourself. If you can imagine yourself as a seven-year-old sitting beside you, what would they need to know that you know now? So, so when you and I chatted, I told you that I discovered at the ripe old age of 57 that I am a multi-potentialite. And I have embraced being a multi-potentialite with everything I have because seven-year-old Haley was already deemed scattered and unfocused because I was multi-potential, but that wasn't a thing. So because I didn't fit into the norm, I was branded as um, disruptive. I was highly creative and that was squashed because it was disruptive. I was very inquisitive. That was squashed because it was disruptive. There were so many things when I reflect back now, and I'm just really, really lucky that my parents were very simple, basic people, and they didn't put the pressure on me to be a lawyer, doctor, or accountant. They gave me wings to fly. And those are the things when I reflect back now, I look at it and I think, how amazing that in the deep, dark 80s, my parents were like, you go and do whatever you want to do. You want to do fashion? You go and do fashion. No pressure on you. But today, I'm able to look back on that. And if only I could go back to that seven-year-old and let her just fly and be. However, I get that in mainstream school and all of that, it's still happening today. The conversations are huge around multi-potential kids. And so it's, if I'm going to share anything, I'm going to just keep dropping that word because it is, it elicits so much conversation and it, it gets people thinking about themselves. And when I realized that I wasn't scattered, that I was multi-potential, which meant I could do a whole lot of things at the same time, really well, and I owned it, I just became a whole new person. So it's been a really wild, crazy journey. So yeah, that's seven-year-old Haley. I wish she, um, I wish she'd known about the word multi-potential art. Thank you so much, Haley. Well, it's just adorable to listen to. Bronson, let's go to you. Uh, seven-year-old Bronson was into computers and I'm just going to ask and unmute here. Uh, what else did seven-year-old Bronson, what was he up to? And what would you, if he was sitting beside you right now, right with you and all your cats, what would you, what would you be able to teach him? I wouldn't be able to teach him much, but um, what, what I will tell you is that like, you know, growing up as the youngest of a, of a big family, my next brother is 10 years older than me. 
So when I was like seven, he was 17. The other guy was 27. The other guy was 37. This is how our family works. So I've grown up with people in every generational gap ahead of me, which has put me in the most awesome position ever. You know, when we grew up, I grew up, my brothers used to run a place, which is like a fun park with a bike park, a water slide, like a roller rink on arcade center and a DJ booth. I mean, you know, and you get in for free and you get to hang out with your brothers and play roller hockey all day. Like, you know, that's the shit the kids are supposed to be doing. They're not supposed to be told where to go, what to do and how to do it. They're supposed to be on a BMX all day, burning off thousands of calories, running around the neighborhood and harassing everybody. That's what they do. And it goes to back to what Haley said is that kids are multi-potentialites by default because they live in the creative zone. Everything is a possibility for them and nothing is a restriction because nobody's programmed them yet, hopefully. And the theme that I get from all everybody in this panel as well is the concept of the firestone. I was listening to a rabbi the other day and he dropped a big one. And he said, if you look at the fireplace, like there's three things going on. There's the stuff that is burnt out at the bottom that looks like it's fine, but when you touch it, it just crumbles and it's turned to ash. And it's like, it's time has come and it's time has gone. There's other stuff on top that looks like it might be kind of good, but it hasn't caught fire yet. There was just not enough. Like it's lying there full of potential, but fuck all is happening. And then you get this other weird little thing called the firestone. And the coolest thing about the firestone is that nothing fucking happens until it meets with resistance and gets struck. The minute that thing gets struck, everything activates. Like every single fiber of that thing goes into overdrive and boom, fire. And I think that's what a lot of people in this panel seem to share, that everything has come up against you. And instead of pushing you down, it's kind of prepped you for that one thing that's just going to set off the spark. And the minute that that spark went off, it's like everything opened up. And I think that's what I'm getting from everybody on this panel. And that's kind of juicing me up to get the rest of my day done. That's amazing. What a metaphor. Thank you, Bronson. Su Suzanne, you're muted, so just ask to unmute yourself. And uh, yeah, so wherever you want to take it, but I, I am curious what seven-year-old Suzanne was like. I'm sure others are too, but however you want to take that question. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I find myself listening to y'all and getting so into what you're saying, and then you ask me a question, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to talk. Um, so <laughs> forgive me, <laughs> but uh, um, I want to thank your parents, Haley. That's awesome. So like, you know, I have uh, two little ones that are 10 and 11 and, um, and there's so many times that I just like watch them and, and I'm like, you know, you don't have to, to take what I think you should do. What do you want to do? You know, what do you want to do? And I find myself watching them because Bronson, you said it really well. They are like, they, their default is the creative space. And that's, and, and I even tell them, I'm like, don't let me or anyone else beat that out of you, you know? And, and so I feel really fortunate to, to have them right now. Cause we're all kind of basically the same age, I guess. And, um, I end up having a really good time with them and learning from them. And, um, if I could, if I could go back to like the seven year old Suzanne, um, she would be running through a pasture. And so, um, Arletta, I don't know if you grew up in the area of Texas, but we have like a shit ton of pastures out here and cows and, you know, and so I would sneak into people, you can't do this now, but, and I'm not advocating this, but <laughs> I would sneak into their pastures because they had horses and I'd pretend I was a horse <laughs> and I would run around and just run and run. And that's probably why I'm an ultra runner now. Uh, they just set us free in like the woods and they're like, go run. <laughs> 24 hours later, we're like, okay, I'm done. But it's, um, so yeah, I would say um, that uh, I was running. Maybe um, there was a part of my life that I was running from something, but I'm definitely running towards something now. And it's in the, how Bronson described the big goal. If your goal is so big, you just can't miss it. And you kind of may bump up against the walls a little bit, but if your goal is so big, there's no way you can miss it. And you just kind of keep, you just kind of turn away from the things that aren't bringing you there and turn towards and, and I love how, you know, um, Dr. Destiny Arletta, y'all keep saying drop the baggage. Um, 
I'll finish up with this one comment. Like whenever um, I run and I run ultras, you have aid stations in between because you can't go all the way. Uh, they have to kind of check on you and make sure you're okay. And if you need help and everything, but in between going between those aid stations, you have to figure out what you need just to get you to the next aid station. You can't carry anything extra. And so a lot of times you'll just carry what you can in your hand and you make it to the next aid station. And then you're like, okay, I made it this far and you've covered this much ground behind you. Okay, let's keep going. And so I, I love y'all's y'all's analogy of like, drop the baggage, just drop it because you can't move without it. So thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. That was well wonderful. A real joy. <laughs> Dr. Destiny, curious how you want to take that question. I, you know. So what would I tell my seven-year-old self? I would say, you know what? Don't let anybody hold you back. You're going you're gonna to be okay. Life is going to be okay. So I would definitely have this attachment to people growing up. I told you my story. Father didn't raise me, right? So Letting go sometimes, I would feel this rejection or if someone said no to me, I would take it very personal. But now I'll just say to my seven-year-old self, just embrace it. A lot of times people would even say like in super, super motiv motivational environments, you know, be, be fearless and, you know, never be afraid and failure isn't an option. And I take those things and I twist them around because as I learn, I realize that failure is actually a requirement to get to the next level in life I realized that uh yeah I do stuff afraid all the time and every time I do it afraid it's because I have a little bit of faith to get to the next level so doing it afraid is definitely something that comes with growth that comes with letting go that comes with going to the next level so I will say to myself it's okay that you're afraid do it anyway and I would say to myself you know something, failure is kind of necessary to go where you're going, but see it as an opportunity. One closed door is another open door. So I just, it's a matter of perspective to me. I wouldn't be as afraid to just go try, let go of old mindsets, old friends, old situations, because it's something great on the other side. I would say, keep going, shiny, keep going. That's what I would say. <laughs> That's Amazing. Thank you for the reminder. I actually needed to hear that this morning. So thank you so much, Dr. Destiny. Of course. Arletta, let's go to you. How do you want to take, where do you want to take that question? Well, I think I'm going to take a look at who seven-year-old Arletta was. I was emerging already. I was in a newspaper. Actually, there's actually, actually social proof that I was on the front page of the newspaper writing an article about drugs. I won a contest and, and it says, picture this, 1991, drugs on the street as thick as the hair on a dog's back. That was the opening line, right? And so if I were to go back and say something absolutely um, earth shaking for my seven-year-old self, I would say you are enough, just as you are. I would even use an even big, you're brilliant. Be in that space and own it. I came from a background where there wasn't a whole lot of building up. We were living in a little taste of hell, but I had a mother who was like a magician who made even the most hellish situations feel like a little taste of heaven every now and again. We didn't have a whole lot. We were very poverty stricken very rich in love, very rich in the element of love and being close knit to each other. And so I may not have had all the things that seem material driven, but the things that make us good humans, my mother poured an overabundance of that inside of me. And so I carry that throughout. The only thing was is that I knew real well how to give it to others, but I, I, I wasn't really certain how to give it back to me. And so as the years passed by, I wasn't sure how to love me properly. So if I were to be able to have a conversation with seven-year-old Arletta, I would tell her, you're going to go through some hellish things, but you're going to make it. Just like the Phoenix, every time you'll rise from the ashes, 
even more beautiful than what you were before. Your wings have a little bit more color and they have a little bit more strength capacity. You don't have to hold on to things that are not serving you. Just keep fo going forward, keep moving forward and don't hold on to anything, nothing. Be open to creativity every single day. Be open to allow your day to go as it needs to go. And, and don't have any like pre, pre, um, pre thoughts on how it should go. Just go with it. Be in a flow. You know what I'm saying? I'm like Bronson, like live in the flow of things, you know, stop allowing for so many things that just don't matter to control your outcomes, but you're brilliant. You're amazing. You're enough. And I love you. Our letter. Wow. Wow. Thank you. All right. Well, let's open it up now. Haley, let's just, uh, we'll go around the circle one more time here. What are your thoughts on, you have to unmute yourself here. What would you like to talk about? Sure. I want to talk about our letter. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's what, no, everybody. I mean, Bronson, you know, if you could get chat GPT to, download this and pull out just one liners. Like I promise you, you could do the most brilliant book now. There were so many pearls dropped by everybody. And literally, if you think about it, like if you were to go back, I, I almost, if, if I have the time, I'll do it. I want to go back and I just want to pull out those one liners from like, like five one liners from each person here, because there was so much power here. And yeah, we are enough. And I think the most important thing is, is that the platform that you've created is going to gift us to the world to share with them that they're going to be enough once they've spent time in our spaces. Because that's what I'm getting from this, is that the self-belief that we're building in this space that we're going to share must go out into a really shattered world. And there must be a glimmer somewhere where we're going to start to spark the fire. I love what you said, Bronson, the fire thing. Whew, that's, that is power. So yeah, that's my takeaway. Amazingness. Thank you so much, Haley. Well put. Bronson, what are your thoughts on wherever you'd like to go? Well, yeah. you know, we covered that Firestone thing and we have like, uh, Rabbi Simon Jacobson to think to thank for that one but you know it, it goes back into playing and leaning into your strength and like you know I'm going to finish and like tongue in cheek here but like for me it's really about freedom at the end of the day and getting that first because that's going to make everything else possible for me I don't want to pay tax I don't want to be somebody's lackey I don't want to you know beholden to anybody I don't want anyone to be beholden to me I just want to be and part of that really does go down to like optimization and for me i joke and i say that it's lazy because i don't want to carry other people's shit with me i don't want to carry my own shit with me i want to get on the plane with hand luggage and i want to sort my shit out when i get to the other side i don't need 10 bags i don't need 20 people i just need a backpack and a general sense of direction and belief in myself and that will open up all the possibilities somebody else was joking that you can drop me anywhere and chances are i'll be fine you know what i fucking will because i believe it i'll sit down with a guy i'll have a joint with him i'll meet the king around the corner we'll go and we'll have something to eat i'll teach him a couple of lessons he'll drop me off at the plane station i'll get on the plane with my same hand luggage and i'll fuck with somewhere else to go catch some waves that for me is good life like that's a good quality of life for me it's not everybody's cup of tea because the beach isn't for everybody some people get burned in the sun so like you know that leaves space for everyone else in the city so go do your thing and be happy about it and try and follow that bliss and that creative like ball of energy that's trying to lead you around because that's what you should be doing that's going to lead you to some really, really awesome little adventures and some really cool places where you're going to learn shit that you need to know about stuff that you're going to have to do. And yeah, that's for me, like it's taken me a long time to get here, but I think that's it for me. And, you know, listening to these ladies light it up this morning, that's what just comes home for me. It's like, be like that Firestone and travel light, like, you know, 
it's simplified it's optimization it's ergonomics it's like it's economy it's sustainability it's freedom it's all of those things and the less you carry the more free you become it's not about how much you accumulate it's how much you can get rid of like that's the thing is like most people are going in the wrong direction and how happy can you be with how little if you can be happy with fuck all nobody can ever take anything from you doesn't matter where they put you in a six foot hole in a five foot box makes no fucking difference wow that was that was profound that was profound thank you bronson suzanne uh closing thoughts anywhere you want to go Oh my gosh. I just want to say like, yeah, Bronson, <laughs> like, like the whole time you're talking, I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's great. I mean, that's, that's, that's great. I don't, I don't even know if I can, I mean, it, that's so, he said it so beautifully, you know, it, it's just, uh, you know, whatever path you've walked Bronson, it has, and then the gifts that you've been given and what you've cultivated in yourself has, made you an, uh, just a really great communicator of, of uh, you know, these, these great ideas. And um, yeah, I just want to say uh, thank you, uh, everyone who's, who's here, because I'm going to take so much that y'all said and carry it around with me all day today. So like, y'all are going to be with me like all day. And yeah, and I'll probably stalk you a little bit too, but um, especially you, Arletta, <laughs> but uh, you're like in my backyard, but um yeah, I, I I really don't have anything to add. It, 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 I'm just filled with gratitude right now. Well, that is a lot you just added. Just <laughs> saying what you said. That's a lot. Thank you, Suzanne. Dr. Destiny, what are your closing thoughts? All right. So one of the things I, I mentioned was what I believe what let go means to me. And when I said that, I said life evolving through what God orchestrated. Well, I want to take it to the next level. We got to get from let go to let's go because that creates a whole nother mindset where you're open to what's coming. So life evolving through situations God ordained, meaning it's a whole spiritual level. When you're going through this tunnel, you're adding on and you're letting go and you're evolving and you're changing with it. So my mindset for me is if God ordained it, fine. I just see myself with my hands out, stretched wide, surrendered, falling back with no end in sight, just knowing God's got me. You know, it's the roller coaster of life. It's, it's the ride of my life. I love it. I'm plugged in. I have my moments, but I always remember that God's got it. It's my destiny. I got to stay on the path and I'm taking everybody with me that wants to come. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Dr. Destiny. Okay, Arletta, closing thoughts. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of closing thoughts except for the fact that this was amazing. Um, I literally, if I could just um, pull out a few words for what I'm feeling right now, um, Empower would probably be at the very top of my list. The resources, the tools, the strategies that I received here on today are just enormous. I love what Bronson said when he says that, that um, beach life isn't for everybody. Some people actually get burned by the sun. I was like, whoa, that's so true. But on an even more level, he was basically just saying, do what works for you and be less concerned with what works, being less involved with what everybody else has going on. Be concerned with what's going on. You stay out of other people's business because when you involve everybody else's stuff, then you're also taking on the, the weight and the baggage of everybody else's stuff. And, and we don't have the capacity to do that. If you want to live a life of freedom, you have to be willing to let go of things that weigh you down. Handling other people's stuff and trying to control other people's stuff will weigh you down, which also controls your level of altitude and elevation in your own personal life. So we have to be willing to determine, is this worth me holding on to? And be willing to assess all those different areas in our lives where we're holding on to things that do not serve us and have the bravery, the courage to let them go. Let it go. Let him go. Let her go. Let that business go if it's killing you. Let it go. Because you know what? We're brilliant and we're able to recreate 
anything that you ever had an idea to do, if you lost it all today, you have the ability to recreate. So stop holding on to things. And it's true. Some people say that you have life, right? People say um, you only live once. I always am the person that says that's a lie. You only die once. You live every day. So what will you do with what you have in life today determines what your tomorrow will look like. And so I'm like so locked in and so important and so charged. And I'm on 110, Amos. So like, I'm like, I mean, I don't even know. Like I have meetings today. So once I get done with this call, what am I going to do with this energy? And plus I got espresso. It's crazy. What, what am I supposed to do, Amos? Tell me what to do. Oh I don't know. I'm along for the ride, Arletta. So I thank you so much for sharing, Arletta. I, I just want to say quickly, thank you all for being here. Haley Joy, thank you for being here. Bronson, thank you for bringing here and bringing your cats too. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for just being you. Thank you so much, Dr. Destiny. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much, Arletta. I, just go ahead. If you guys want to talk amongst each other, Say thanks. Go ahead, unmute yourselves. And Haley, I love what you had to say. I'm not at the ripe age of fifty, uh, right age of fifty-seven yet. I haven't reached that level of wisdom yet, but I'm excited. Um, I'm at a point to be, you know, total, you know, be honest. Is like I am trying to embrace everything about aging. So that mindset of the forgotten woman sometimes leans into age too. So I wanna thank you because your message is universal. It's not just for the plus size woman, but it's for the woman who's packing on a little bit of pounds and getting a little curvy as it, time goes on. It's like, love yourself, embrace yourself. From the gray hairs to things that used to be sitting up that's coming down, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, I'm a damn woman, I'm not a, I'm not an object. I'm a person that's growing and I'm really embracing myself a little bit more because of your message, your powerful message. I have little daughters and they are multi-creatives. Um, they're multi, what do you say? Multi-potential. I love that. I never, ever, ever heard that before. And so just saying it's okay to be who you are in that moment is going to add value to their lives and you never met them. That's why I love this platform. Suzanne, I don't know if you know this or not, but you helped me today. I still trying to figure out what to do sometimes. So I have my little stuffy jacket on and I said, look at her, you know, I'll take my freaking jacket off. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> And um, Arletta, uh, you know, you pour into me all the time. You almost had me this close to cussing. Me and Bronson, Bronson, you bring out the Navy sailor in me. I was about to say, let's F and go. <laughs> My father was a pilot in the Second World War. So I speak See? dock worker yeah. with several fluent dialects, you know. There like we go. Pilot dialect, sailor dialect, <laughs> you know. And the funny thing is, like, I left school, like, I was in a Roman Catholic school until I was in, what do you guys call it, fifth grade? Oh, I didn't yeah. know what a swear word was. But within three weeks, I'd mastered them all. So, like, that <laughs> was good. You're a genius. <laughs> I, you know, I study well. <laughs> but, yeah, I just, I really do thank you, ladies, for bringing Aww. the heat. Like, you know, I was a little bit concerned because I was kind of letting go. What am I letting go of? And it's like preconceived ideas of what this chat is That's going to right. look like because right. you guys are amazing. So thank you all for your time. This is really kind of, I've, I've only had a couple of hours sleep, but I'm so juiced up and ready to go. It's not even funny. Thank yeah. you. Amos, thank you for the platform. Bronson, thank you for the words. And I'm amongst my tribe. Feels good. Yeah. I'm just emotional. Just want everybody to know that I'm sending so so much love over the airwaves right now, like towards each and every one of you, because I know sometimes when we pour out, we need to take some time and replenish what we poured out. It's significant. Everyone had something so powerful to say. I'm literally like in my emotions right now. I'm not even kidding you. I'm struggling to pull myself out. I have tears sitting in the corner of both eyes. That's how <laughs> much I feel right now and when what i know even more i know that if it does this for me oh my yeah because i'm an impact driven person i know what it's going to do for others 
That's right. And I'm so honored to be here. <laughs> so thank you. I got to, ooh, oh my goodness. Our letter stops. <laughs> No, what I well, wanted thank you. To, what I wanted to share with you that's so amazing about this is I've seen in in real time the impact that somebody who takes the time to understand where others are and and goes after the forgotten woman. And I don't only dress plus size woman. I have many regular size women that just like what I do. Yes. And it's interesting because they have their own damages. They have their own forgotten stuff. You know, it's assumed because they're regular size, they're okay. Like there's nothing, there's nothing going on. And what, what my journey, it's just so much more than being a fashion designer now, is I get to bond with women on so many different levels. And I get to have an impact on their lives because because I care and because I am living my dream. So I'm going to share very quickly with you. When I was 16 years old, I went into career counseling and the career counselor said, hello, dearie. And what would you like to be when you leave school? What would you like to do when you leave school? And I said, oh, I want to go out and make a difference. And she said, oh, no, no. She says, you can't make a living and make a difference at the same time unless you marry a very rich man or you're a trustful baby. It was the greatest gift she ever gave me because <laughs> it was the fire underneath me. I, I, I walked out of there. I was like, come on, surely like that can't be true. And through my whole career, I had that always in the back of my mind. And today I have built my business to the point where the money is the money. The money is needed because it has to pay bills. I'm not interested in the money. I am just interested in the difference that we make. It's a beautiful team. We have our own production facility and we just make beautiful clothes with heart. And I am making a difference while I make a living. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all of you. This has been really, really what a gift. Yeah. Thank you everyone for being here. If you've been watching or listening to the Empower Network, You've been listening to Haley Joy from South Africa, Bronson Harrington from Costa Rica, Suzanne Luke from West Texas, Arlette Allen from West Texas, or, and then Dr. <laughs> California. <laughs> Kelly! <laughs> we appreciate you being here. If you're new to the group, um, we welcome you no matter when you're coming into the group. Thanks for being here. We hope if this vibes with you, then we love hearing that because we want to create a space where these kind of vibes are welcomed and happen frequently. Yeah. Right, everyone, I guess we're going to sign off. So having a fantastic day wherever you're at. Yay. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.